I, I guess you guys have been paying attention to uh, things happening in uh, American culture over the past few weeks. Um, this is these are challenging times <laughs> to use a beaten to death euphemism. Challenging, in fact. Uh, we are having ourselves poked in the chest by the state media. You're having your basic underlying assumptions about the way shit ought to be challenged on a daily basis. And this gets very, very tiresome. But it doesn't look like it's going to be letting up anytime soon. Okay, when when the basic assumptions about human behavior and human relationships are challenged for politics, somebody's got to stand up and say no, no, no. And with that in mind, I'm going to read you an article I wrote about three years ago, right at three years ago. And this article is called The Corporate Culture of the Asgard Company. And um, excuse me for looking down. I don't have the luxury of a teleprompter. So I can't pretend to be looking at the camera and reading at the same time. We're old school here, as you are about to find out even more graphically. All right. <clears throat> So this is the corporate culture of the Asgard company. All organizations develop a personality. Corporations, companies, nonprofit organizations, restaurants, families, bands, card games, groups of people who associate with each other for any length of time eventually organize a framework for their interactions. And that framework derives from the values and ethics of the majority of the people in the group. And the personalities of the people in the group depend on the nature of the activities engaged in by the group that attracted them. We have a corporate culture at the Asgard Company, the publishers of Starting Strength, and this website. We are not an actual corporation, but rather a small LLC. There are no shareholders, no diffuse and nebulous ownership in which no direct responsibility lies. Myself, myself and Dr. Steph Bradford own this company, and it's not for sale. We both work very long hours every single day to ensure the integrity of our educational products. A handful of people work here in the falls with us. Nick Delgadillo, Rusty Holcomb, and Bree Hillen, who has recently relocated to Memphis, but she still works for us. And we all approach our work as artisans. We do it for the satisfaction of the task. And absolutely nothing here is done for the money, which is handy since business is slow right now, like it is everywhere. At uh, the Asgard Company, our values take the place of the rules that most other people follow at work. And the global and no global pandemic will change this, boys and girls. We have starting strength coaches all over the world, affiliate gyms all over the country, and advocates of the method everywhere. They are a bridge between the educational material we create and the tens of thousands of people who elect to get their help with its application. Our corporate culture is shared by many of them and is, in fact, what attracted many of them to starting strength. Here at the gym in Wichita Falls, our political philosophy is that of classical liberalism. Outlined quite well on Wikipedia's classical liberalism page. In a practical sense, we are conservative libertarians. We believe that the function of of government should be restricted to the protection of individual rights, the provision of services that cannot be provided by the free market, like national defense, the enforcement of contracts and common law, 
water, and provisions of absolutely necessary public institutions and public works like that. And that's about all. We've learned that we can and should provide for ourselves and those we choose to provide for by our own efforts. And that as long as our actions do not infringe on the rights of other people, we should not be interfered with while doing so. Individual liberty and personal responsibility form the basis of this philosophy. Free people accomplish more than subjects. Accomplishment being the basis for a healthy relationship with oneself and others. There are many things accomplished while accumulating strength through the process of training, detailed in our books, videos, and articles on the website. And not all of those things are physical. Finishing a heavy set of five squats when you'd rather not is a complex task requiring analysis and decisions at multiple levels. The first rep and the fourth rep are quite different events. And the process of going from first to fourth informs the lifter about the fifth. It will be harder. It may be unpleasant. And it may not come back up. It may not be completed. It has the potential for injury if you are unable to hold your position during the execution of the rep, and missing it has consequences for your next workout. So there is pressure to complete the last rep, as there should be. It involves your ability to accurately assess what you have just done, which is a skill that also develops with training, and your willingness to try something you aren't sure you can do. More than just finishing an individual set, our model of training involves planning a long series of workouts to yield a specific result in a definite time frame. This means developing an understanding of the cumulative effects of different workouts in the context of your own level of training advancement for the purpose of achieving a specific performance goal. Goal setting, understanding the nature of the stress recovery adaptation phenomenon, schedule adherence, courage under the bar, yes, and a thorough appreciation for the process of planning and execution are the foundations of successful strength training. They are also the foundations of success outside the weight room. It is impossible to overstate the importance of the lessons learned when starting and then completing a physical task you are not sure you can actually do. Those lessons bleed over into all aspects of life as a few seconds reflection will reveal. These are the lessons of the barbell, and they are our common bond. With this in mind, our company has a few characteristics shared by all of us here in Wichita Falls and by lots of the people who find our methods interesting. We don't like big government. Government regulation of the workplace and personal space and government safety nets for those who decide not to finish life's heavy set of five. We don't appreciate people who are constantly offended for other people at no cost of themselves and who feel the need to force us to agree with their opinions. You cannot make us agree with you, but you have our permission to try to convince us. We like people who take personal responsibility, who do not ask for charity, and who give freely when they feel compelled to do so. We appreciate an honest effort toward a worthwhile goal, and we'll help you if we can. We like things like nice guns, good food, strong drink, talented musicianship, 
thoughtful art, and the effort it takes to create these things. We appreciate beautiful women and handsome men. Masculinity and femininity. And we know the difference. We also understand that some people have different opinions about these things, and we respect their opinions at precisely the same level of enthusiasm with which they respect ours. We understand and follow the scientific method as the best way to understand nature and physical existence, and we loathe scientism as a pale mockery thereof. We value reason and logic over feeling and emotion, since quantification and verification are preferable to subjective assertion and whim. We believe in doing the right thing. We believe in integrity, in the virtue of truth, and that the ends do not justify the means. We believe in the Western European ideal of heroism, in the examples of Beowulf, Tyr, and Sigurd. We abhor cowardice, and we revere honorable conduct. And finally, we value accomplishment because every human being on the planet can accomplish things in proportion to the abilities they possess if they will just do what is necessary. Outcomes will thus be different, but opportunities must be equal. And entropy, you know, the gradual and inevitable decline into disorder built into the very fabric of the universe. Entropy is the real enemy of accomplishment. We know that none of this is particularly fashionable, but maybe you're not fashionable either. Our fight against entropy continues to expand. Starting Strength has now been translated into seven languages, practical programming for strength training into five. The Starting Strength Gyms franchise company has opened 18 gyms across the country with another, well, with a total of 40 in various stages of completion. We are growing very quickly. A Starting Strength branded line of barbell equipment manufactured by Texas Strength Systems and CAPS Welding is available. Our audio and video library continues to expand. Informative website articles by intelligent contributors continue to accumulate every week. And the website since 2014 has had 20 million individual visitors. Book sales continue to grow. More coaches are being certified every month, and all of our books, videos, articles, and friends expose many people to the exciting idea that they are actually the masters of their own physical identity. Now, if you agree with our approach, I hope we can contribute to your own fight against the forces of entropy. It's very important right now. Uh, we do things differently than the corporations that are in the news do them. And we always will do them differently. Things at the Asgard Company, things at Starting Strength, are not like they are in the places you don't like. This is intentional. And it will continue to be this way. Trust me.